So, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me to be part of such interesting session and also for an opportunity to speak about some philosophical ideas. Uh, we are not going to speak here about some uh, treatment options. We are going to speak about just our future. It, it's been uh, difficult, actually, to prepare for this talk. And the more you go into the topic, the more questions arise. I would like to share my viewpoint with you. Maybe we, it will result in a discussion. So triple negative breast cancer. If you ask any oncologist, um, if you wake an oncologist in the middle of the night and ask about triple negative cancer, everybody would say that this is absence of uh, estrogen uh, uh, expression, progesterone uh, reception, and HER2 negative. It's a very malignant, um, proliferative activity, aggressive, and uh, younger patients suffer from it. Indeed, it is so in the majority of cases, but uh, let's look into it and uh, because the devil is in details. So this is one of the stereotypes which I suppose we shall need to step aside from because at the stage of histological verification there is heterogeneity immediately seen. Most frequently it's a invasive ductal type of um, uh, cancer. But the spectrum is big. It's lobular, it's neuroendocrine carcinoma, metaplastic cancer of high and low malignancy rate, which can be different in terms of prognosis. And we should not forget about the favorable triple negative cancers such as medullary, uh, apocrinic, and adenocystic cancer. So you can see that the subtypes are different, and that would be different in the prognosis. I suppose that of late, in every talk about triple negative cancer, we hear the heterogenic uh, genesity of this type of uh, cancer, but we just state it because at the moment uh, we cannot use this knowledge clinically. But as a matter of fact, I suppose we should be striving to use this particular knowledge. If we speak about the PAM50 classification, we consider that it's a basal uh, subtype. Also, there is lumina A, lumina B, HER2, enriched, and so on. The Lehman uh, classification here, we have six subtypes, uh, basal-like two of them, uh, immunomodulate uh, mesenchymal. So this uh, classification has been used up to, um, and then it was shortened to uh, four subtypes. But the vast majority is not about basal like subtype, and there is a significant difference between the first and the second. And as a matter of fact, there is uh, one quarter of all patients uh, that um, s separate this uh, pie chart into four parts. This is, uh, and if you look at the survival curves, then the uh, best uh, survival is in the basal like one, and basal like two has the worst survival. So these are completely different tumors in terms of the uh, prognosis, and uh, they are different in terms of treatment sensitivity. So we have different pathways, different genes and mutations, which would be typical of each of these subtypes and genetic variants, and uh, for which we have potentially um, just potential uh, ways of targeted impact. So at the moment, we are just dreaming about anti-androgen lumina cancer. Although, if we speak about the clinical manifestations, I suppose that everybody tried to use uh, different drugs like uh, bicalutomid. And uh, at the moment, we do not see any evident effect. And we need to continue researching. But if you speak about the response to standard chemotherapy, then they would be completely different in terms of the response. The biggest, uh, so to say, regression rate is uh, basal-like uh, type 1, and the lowest is basal-like 2. These are completely t different uh, subtypes, basal-like 1 and 2. And there is uh, stratification of the molecular 
Uh, it's the Lehman classification and PAM 50 joint when the Lumina subtype uh, LAR. Uh, there can be two variants actually, and also it is clear that, as a matter of fact, they are Lumina uh, or similar to the Lumina ones and uh, they do not reach full regression and the survival rate is never uh, improved. In this subtype, sooner or later, I suppose we should be speaking not about chemotherapy, but about, about CDK inhibitors, PDK inhibitors, and so, so on. If we speak about the basal or basal-like subtype, then, as a matter of fact, we have two options here. The mesenchymal with a low expression, uh, with uh, low immunogenicity, and with uh, uh, low sensitivity to immune therapy. And the basal uh, type with uh, uh, tilts, uh, high expression, and these type of tumors, they are very sensitive to chemotherapy. As a matter of fact, I do hope that we will uh, have a chance to uh, take this into account in practice, and uh, uh, we will. Uh, it will just um, ha have an impact in the uh, treatment. I'm going to speak about the biology and the prognosis. With the triple negative cancer, is always poor prognosis. I'm not speaking about the molecular subtypes. Even I'm not speaking about the luminous subtypes. <clears throat> Any. Any triple negative is it always poor prognosis. You have probably heard that the high expression of the infiltrating tumors is always good. It improves the prognosis. But it was true only for patients who were on chemotherapy because we didn't care. The patients will anyway be on chemotherapy and they have better prognosis. But I managed to find this retrospective analysis from four institutions and their databases. They actually analyzed uh, the, um, the uh, early stage triple negative breast cancer patients who did not receive adjuvant chemotherapy. These were uh, stage one or two. The uh, age median was 64 years of age, and uh, the tumor size median was 1.6 centimeters. So. Uh, it was quite a big uh, percentage, almost 30 percent had this high uh, level of tilts, one third of patients. Now, it turned out that the five-year survival of patients with a high tilts level without chemotherapy accounts for 80 percent. That's significantly higher than in patients who had low levels of TILS. And if we speak about patients of stage one, then survival, overall five year survival, accounted for 98%. This is the data that really stuck me because what actually struck me, because what we actually have uh, adjuvant, these are four courses of AC and then uh, 12 paclitex cell courses, but they can live nicely even without chemotherapy at all. What else, what else do we know about triple negative cancer? This is very high sensitivity to chemotherapy. And it was convincingly demonstrated that in the full hematological regression, the survival of this subtype is similar to the more favorable subtypes. And the PCR is achieved in 40, 50 percent. So almost half of the patients can be spared of the poor prognosis, and we can actually uh, state full morphological regress. And unfortunately, there is a, um, always a spot in the every, every silver cloud. Uh, this is uh, one of our poster presentations, which we sent over to ASCO. These are patients with a locally uh, advanced uh, triple negative uh, breast cancer who are after no adjuvant platinum-based chemotherapy. Um, and we paid attention to the fact that uh, there is a big percentage of uh, the brain metastasis in patients with the BSEA mutations. Uh, out of seven patients who had progression in CNS, three out of seven had 
full morphological regress. It seems to be very good, uh, good prognosis, but we uh, also detected this type of um, thing. Of course, we need to look into it. Um, what about the patients with residual tumor? Whether it is always bad? Not all the patients, even with the significant residual tumor, have um, disease progression. Another very important question is uh, residual cancer burden assessment. So the, I suppose that uh, this is an adequate system of assessment which takes into account the uh, tumor bed, the margins and the uh, number and the size of the lymph nodes, uh, and uh, it is calculated by a scale from zero up to three, which is the most uh, significant residual tumor. And if you actually subdivide it into these type of classes, then it turns out that it uh, will uh, definitely uh, determine the prognosis. And patients with BCA1 will have this uh, type of um, um, survival, which is not different with PCR. So actually, uh, you can have this prognostic information. This is, again, our data. This is a complex assessment of the residual tumor. This is the level of KI67 and the tilt dynamics. Also, we uh, detected that even patients with uh, manifested um, just um, residual tumor, a significant residual tumor, and also uh, having the low EOLs up to they uh, have 100 uh, percent survival rates so it's not all, always associated with the poor prognosis thus if you come to sum up this part of my talk for example there is a patient uh, a typical picture g3 ki 67 90 percent she knows everything from the internet uh, she is absolutely terrified petrified she says that she has the most aggressive, uh, worst of all tumor. And once again, let's sum everything up. So part of the pa patients with the high level of tilts, they live very well without uh, chemotherapy. Big percentage of patients, the uh, achievement of PCR among young patients uh, is approximately 80%, so full regression, 80%. And as I've already said, even with the residual tumor, having different biological characteristics, the survival rate is very poor. So I suppose the stereotype that triple negative cancer is always poor prognosis, I suppose we should actually be, we should start getting rid of it. Let's continue. Now, what else can improve our uh, results of uh, treatment? This is impact over the uh, residual tumor. We can study its pathways. There is a mutation analysis, and it turned out that in more than 90% of patients, there are certain alterations or mutations which we can potentially uh, influence. And uh, if you look the right-hand um, sort of graph, then uh, these mutations are subdivided into five groups, and it turns out that for each of them we do have these uh, drugs. For example, these are CDK inhibitors, and also these are uh, these are the drugs that can uh, influence uh, and treat even these prognostically poor tumors. If we speak about the chemotherapy, what about the evolution? We are in the very beginning of this um, path, but nonetheless, we have certain changes so far. We are speaking about the immune therapy, which is already a part of the standard treatment of metastatic um, uh, triple negative uh, breast cancer. Uh, there is uh, tumor infiltration with lymphocytes, and also, uh, as a matter of fact, if it is uh, middle immunogenic tumors, uh, such as between sarcoma and melanoma, but inside breast cancer, there is a very significant heterogeneity. If you look at the lumen, I have two negative. There are no mutations, but look at how many mutations we can detect in triple negative. 
Also, it's been demonstrated that in the triple negative cancer, PDL1 expression is high and it can be observed much more frequently than in other types of subtypes, than in other subtypes. And uh, these are the slides that you are familiar with. Uh, at the Zelizumab uh, showed much better results if it is added to NAP Paclitaxel. So uh, now uh, this is a keynote study. Um, uh, Zelizumab also shows improvement uh, if compared to chemotherapy alone. And uh, if you look at this, then I suppose that we are just uh, trying to catch up with the train um, in metastatic cancer, but there is data that shows that with the tumor growth, the more there is progression, the bigger there is sensitivity to immune therapy. There is the so-called immune escape, and the characteristics of the tumor, in fact, would be uh, telling of the immune suppression, and it uh, reacts worse. Generally speaking, we would like to shift this option to the earlier stages, and uh, the keynote uh, uh, 5 to 20, uh, 22, uh, this is no adjuvant treatment study. You can see uh, this PCR achievement, and uh, the figures are not significantly different. The three-component chemotherapy gives us similar results. We would like to have better. Of course, there are questions about the cost and toxicity, but uh, and whether it will result in better survival. As a matter of fact, we should detect the group of uh, patients who who are who will benefit from immune therapy. And I'm asking myself, for example, immune therapy shouldn't be provided to patients with high level of tilts who actually live uh, pretty well. Or should we be thinking about other tumors with low immune, uh, immunogenicity? Maybe we, by means of chemotherapy, they, we release antigens, immunogenicity is increased, and only then immune uh, therapy should be used. But it's a sort of a, phil a philosophical question. Now, briefly, I'm going to speak about another opportunity of uh, uh, dual negative. Uh, these are um, BRCA-associated uh, breast cancer. These are 15% uh, of uh, triple negative patients. First of all, this is uh, a reparation of, um, and, uh, as, a, as a result of uh, homological uh, process, and also there are PARP uh, enzymes which actually are in charge of the dual chain DNA uh, repair. So these uh, PARP inhibitors and the dysfunction of BRCR, they must. There is a, the so-called uh, principle of the synthetic lethality, and uh, uh, you can see that the uh, cell can uh, perish. There are two, actually, uh, studies which demonstrated better relapse-free survival if compared to just um, chemotherapy, but we would like to have PARP inhibitors in earlier cancers. For example, as an impact of the residual uh, tumor, after no adjuvant treatment in uh, BRCA uh, negative cancer. Uh, so here, this is my last slide. I would, I suppose that sooner or later, we shall come to the situation uh, when we uh, subdivide uh, triple negative cancers into different sub, uh, sub options. The pathomorphological uh, classification, genetic classification, all of them should be taken into account. And this is not that much, uh, so to say, um, Unrealistic. We can study the tails and the androgen expressions uh, for us to uh, uh, so we uh, shall actually uh, have the tumors uh, effective standard chemotherapy. So most probably. Uh, we can also use the immune therapy, the platinum uh, uh, medications, and also PARP inhibitors, and also in the androgen receptor expressions, we can also use and integrate the antiandrogens, if not in the separate um, uh, but uh, option, then probably in combination with chemotherapy or targeted treatment, partly uh, 3K, for example, or inhibitors. And I do hope that just like Nikolai said, uh, we would like to have the same decision-making tree 
in the triple negative cancer, just like in the uh, non-small cell uh, cancer of the lung. Thank you very much for 